Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Fourier transform of a single pulse. And in particular, we're going to look at what we call the amplitude spectrum of that Fourier transform. So here we have a single pulse that has amplitude A and pulse width tau. So it starts from minus tau over 2 to tau over 2. And if we take the Fourier transform of that, we get this function right here. It looks kind of like a Bessel function. It has an initial amplitude of A times tau. A is the amplitude of the pulse, and tau is the pulse width. So the amplitude here is simply be the product of the amplitude here times the pulse width. And then you can see how the amplitude tends to oscillate and become smaller and smaller and smaller. The question is, where does it cross the frequency axis? And so what we're doing here is we go from the time domain to the frequency domain, and we're trying to understand this curve a little bit better. Notice that the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi f, and f is 1 over the period, so omega becomes 2 pi over the period. Notice that it crosses over here at 2 pi over the period, then here it crosses over at 2 times 2 pi over the period, and it crosses again at 3 times 2 pi over the period, and so forth. The points in between where we have an amplitude, here we have 1 and a half times 2 pi over the period, and 2 and a half times 2 pi over the period, and 3 and a half, and so forth, so you can see the pattern. Here we notice that the amplitude of that function can be described by the product a times tau, which is this amplitude right there, times the sine of omega tau over 2 divided by omega tau over 2. Now that's the function that describes what you see over here. If you then want to have the amplitude, you simply take every negative portion of the function and flip it over and make it positive. So that would simply be the amplitude spectrum of what we see over here. Again, the amplitude in the middle is just like it's over there, a times tau. So what is the amplitude there, there, and there, and so forth? And we'll get to that in just a moment. First of all, the amplitude over here. Why is it a times tau? Well, if this is a function, notice the sine of an angle divided by the angle. When the angle approaches zero, that ratio is always equal to one. By definition, in the limit, as theta approaches zero, the sine of theta divided by theta equals one, and therefore, when omega here is zero, you can then say that the amplitude is simply one times this, and therefore we get a times tau. But what about the amplitude, for example, over here? Well, there, omega is one and a half times two pi over tau. So let's plug that in here and see what we get. If omega is equal to 1.5 times two pi over tau, then what does this equal to? So then we can say that the function, when omega is equal to 1.5 times 2 pi over tau, this is equal to a times tau times the sine of, and so we plug in for omega, 1.5 times 2 pi over tau, so 1.5, I'll put parentheses around it so it's clear, times tau divided by 2. Notice that this cancels out, and this cancels out, and we end up with one and a half times pi. Well, one and a half times pi, that's 270 degrees. And at 270 degrees, the sine of that is equal to negative one. And so that's why you can see here, at 270 degrees, we end up with a negative amplitude. Then we have to divide that amplitude, so it would be negative one times this, divided by this quantity. So when we calculate this, we can then say that omega tau over 2, when omega is equal to this right here, then we get 1.5 times 2 pi divided by tau times tau over 2. So the tau's cancel out, the 2's cancel out, and we end up at 1.5 times pi. So this becomes 1.5 times pi, and that goes in the denominator. So we end up with this magnitude times the negative one divided by 1.5 times pi. So therefore, the amplitude here, we get rid of the negative. We end up with a tau divided by this. When we plug in the correct values, we get a tau divided by one and a half times pi, and that will be the amplitude here. The amplitude for the next one here will be 
at times 5 over 2 pi. And the next one would be a tau divided by 7 over 2 pi and so forth. So you can see that the amplitude keeps diminishing as you go farther and farther out in the frequency domain in the, or on the frequency axis, I should say. All right, so hopefully that will give us a better picture of how, what this equation actually means. So this is the function, this is the Fourier transform of a single pulse. It is written in this format right here. It gives you this initial amplitude at the center, and then as you continue on, you can see you end up with a, a function that is the sine of omega tau over 2 divided by omega tau over 2. As omega gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you can see that the amplitude diminishes. If you then only take the positive of each of these lumps, or each of these humps, you can see that this will be the magnitude of your Fourier transform of this particular pulse, and that's what's called the amplitude spectrum. And that's how it's done.